Next thing, let's look at what are the things we can do to increase our self-approval, our self-appreciation, our self-acceptance. Here's number one, love yourself. Make caring for you the highest priority in your life. Take care of you. Look out for what truly satisfies you. We're not taught to love ourselves. We're not taught to look out for ourselves. We're not taught to take care of ourselves, to become sensitive to our wants, to our needs, our, our desires. So make a conscious effort. Make you number one priority, your peace of mind. Your health is more important than your family and any and everybody. Because if you don't have peace of mind, if you don't have your health, you can't serve anybody. Don't neglect yourself. A lot of us, and particularly ladies, have been groomed to be sacrificial lambs. Putting their dreams on the back burner in deference to their children's dreams, or their husband's dreams, or their family's dreams. And forget about themselves. Then become resentful and angry and bitter. So start taking care of yourself, looking out for you. Develop a health plan. Your health is all you got. So start taking care of you, eating nutritious meals, willing to exercise your body, taking care of this body, loving yourself. So do some good stuff for yourself on purpose. Take some time out for you. I have some good things I do for me. One of the things I enjoy that I do, I take spiritual baths. My assistant introduced me to someone called Sister Sarah who gave me my first spiritual bath. I never heard of this before. She told me about it and I said, come on, come on, Regina, spiritual bath. And um, Sue, my secretary's husband named Larry, he said, a spiritual bath for $50, I'll give you a spiritual shower. <laughs> but I play soft music. I've taped some of my favorite music. I play, I burn a candle and I have different oils that I put in the tub of hot water and I have flowers that I picked and I put, I like, you know, I saw coming to America, you know, Lady Murphy, <laughs> you know, they were sprinkling little flowers on the ground right now. <laughs> so it gives me a feeling of royalty. So I, I sprinkle these flowers in the water and I soak. I like doing that and I soak and sometimes I read or just relax and enjoy the music and just cool out. That's my time for me. Put the answering service on, I just block out some time for me. I'm into meditation, I've been working and, and exercising now, just doing some things for me, taking care of myself mentally, emotionally and spiritually and physically. You can't develop and manifest your greatness. You can't be a high achiever if you don't feel good. You don't take care of yourself. So I'm taking care of me and then you know what? It takes the edge off your life. It helps you to manage things rather than allowing them to manage you. Gives you more personal power to deal with stuff. Take care of you. Now here's something else I suggest for you. Become aware of what your needs are and develop compassion towards yourself despite your human defects. Develop compassion for yourself despite your human defects. You will never be perfect. Hello. <laughs> you will never be perfect. You're human. You've made a lot of mistakes. You've done a lot of dumb, stupid things. Guess what? You're not through yet. <laughs> You're going to do some more. Hurry up and get it over with. <laughs> it's all right. You've got to learn to be gentle with yourself. Make it all right what you don't know, mistakes that you make. It's okay. Handle it. Learn from the experience. Decide that you are going to whatever you become involved in to be up front, to be true to yourself. Are you getting what you need out of it? And be up front with people and tell them what you need from them. Don't assume that they know. Don't say, I thought you knew. No, tell people up front. Here's what I need from this in order for this to work for me. Be up front with your stuff. Tell them up front so they're not surprised later on. So your feelings aren't hurt later on. See, if they tell you up front they can't do it, now you know you can keep on stepping. But tell people up front, here's what I want. In order for me to play this game with you, if we're going to dance, this is what I got to get out of it. 
See, if you don't take care of your needs, guess what? You will always have that nagging song in the back of your mind say, well, when do I get mine? When am I going to start enjoying this? Are we going to have a good time together? Do I get any utils out of this at all? You're going to start asking that question. Everybody's happy and having a good time, but you? They say, well, we thought you were happy. How could you think that? Well, you weren't saying anything. Well, I'm saying something now. Hope you got that. <laughs> See, we're taught to be quiet and not speak up for ourselves and not to be selfish. If you don't take care of you, who do you think is going to take care of you? Who's going to look out for you better than you will? No one. No one's going to do that. You got a business? No one's going to take care of your business better than you. Nobody. Nobody. Anything you want to do in life, you've got to take ownership of it and say, hey, I'm going to make this happen. Be willing to venture out and do something that you have fantasized about doing. And you know you probably won't be good at it, but do it anyhow. Case in point, I have always wanted to sing. I've always wanted to do that. I'm going to sing a song. If I don't do nothing but just a few lines, chances are, you know. <laughs> now, I might not be a Luther Vandroff, you know, <laughs> or an Andy Williams, you know, but it might be a little Perry Como up in there, a little Mathis and Nat King Cole. <laughs> Next thing is avoid people and situations that upset you. Hello? <laughs> See, there's some people that know just how to push your button. They know just what to say. So, you know what? I don't even deal with them. I just avoid, excuse me. Hey, hey um, I want to talk about something. I, I understand, excuse me. I, I'll be right back. <laughs> now, you might call that cowardly. But I'm not going to expend any energy arguing with anybody. Life is too short, ladies and gentlemen, and unpredictable. I don't want to spend my time arguing with anybody, so I avoid situations that will get me upset. I don't argue with people. I avoid things. I don't look at movies that, that frighten me. Last fright movie I saw was The Exorcist. I never saw another one after that. I never forget going home. At that time, I was married, and I was blowing the horn, going up into the driveway. I said, open the door. <laughs> I pull up, open the door to get out, and I said, oh, Lord, they got me. I started blowing the horn. My wife said, unfasten your seatbelt, fool. I said, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That movie scared me out of my wits. So I don't look at scary movies. I'm one of the people in a scary movie like this. Tell me, tell me what's happening now. Tell me what's happening. I threw popcorn all over everybody. And that girl was spitting on those people. I don't do that. No, 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 no. No, so I, I slept in the house with lights on all over the house for two weeks. I was embarrassed. But your children said, Daddy, turn the lights off. No. So I don't do, I just avoid things. I go see comedies. I love Danny DeVito and Steve Martin. I like things that make me laugh, make me feel good. I like the little boy in me. Life is just too serious. Here's something else that can help to increase your self-esteem. Draw the line, ladies and gentlemen. There are certain things that we just go through life just taking, and at some point, you just got to draw the line and just say enough is enough. You got to do that with yourself. Just draw the line, you know, there, see, when I, how I manage my, my food choices, I get on scale every day. If I get to a certain level, that's a crisis level. I just get down, start doing setups right there. Look at, hey, right away. <laughs> if, I, if my income dropped to a certain level, I go crazy. I start working like, you see this callus on my ear? You see that callus right there? <laughs> that's how that callus got there. You know, my income dropped. And I made 200 calls a day as punishment. Don't you ever let this happen again. Because I'll never, never, never be broke again. So you got to draw a line. You just got to draw. There's certain things that you just don't permit. If you got negative people in your life, just one. So look here. I was talking to someone I loved very much, had a just dynamic relationship with us. Look here. I can't grow from that. If you're persistent, 
and saying those kind of things to me. I'm saying to you right now, I won't tolerate that. And I will terminate this because I'm not going to expose myself to this type of humiliation. I don't like that. I don't like getting called in names and putting each other down. I don't like that. Come back to me, I'm sorry. No, that won't get it. So you put a nail in a hole, you make that impression, you pull a nail out, that mark is still there. That's not for God. We can't extract that from the record. So don't, don't say that to me. So we were talking about something else. Person said it again. Boom. You're a loser. Very good. And you are too because you just lost a very good friend. I don't choose to be around you anymore. And that was it. I said, that's cool. Maybe it is. But I get people out of my life that aren't good for me. One negative stroke is 16 times more powerful than a positive stroke. And if you have people around you who are not sensitive to who you are, and the people that can hurt you the most, ladies and gentlemen, are the people that you love, that you love. They're the ones that you're vulnerable to. They're the ones that can get to you. And if they're insensitive, I don't care who they are, See, if you don't draw the line with people, if you just let them run rampant in your life and you let things happen to you that you don't feel good about, if you continue to allow it to happen, you won't feel good about yourself. Your image of yourself will erode. So you've got to draw the line in the conditions that you find yourself in. Here's a jarring question. Why are known hells preferable to strange heavens? Why would people live in a known hell? Why do people just go to a job where they're miserable day in and day out? Why do people stay together and they're miserable, sleeping in separate rooms, or arguing, or the only thing they have in common is paying the bills? Don't talk, don't communicate, don't share anything together day in and day out, as short and unpredictable that life is, being mean to each other. Why do people do that? Known hells are preferable to strange heavens because it's familiar. See, life is rough, ladies and gentlemen. It's rough and it's scary. It's scary growing. It's scary taking a chance. It's scary acting on your intuition, on your guts. It's scary. It's frightening. There are people that are tolerating things right now and they're immobilized by fear. They can see the hammer coming and they're afraid to even move because it's scary. Federal White said something. To go against the dominant thinking of your family, friends, and those people you associate with every day is perhaps the most difficult act of courage you will ever perform. See, when you start growing, when you start changing the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you act, the way you respond to things, the way you use your time, when you start saying no, I can't do that. Why? You, you're too busy. You don't have the time. No, I have my own agenda. I got something that I'm doing. Not lying to try and get out of it. Just say, no, I'm busy doing something that I want to do. Or I don't want to do that. And I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not mad. Not upset about it. I just don't want to do it. Why? Well, I don't have to give you any reasons why. I don't want to do it. But listen, thank you so much for asking me. Take it easy here. Hey, I thought you were all right. Is that right? Oh, boy. <laughs> Ask me, do I care about that? See, if, if people can put you on a guilt trip, they will. And use you and abuse you over and over and over again. You got to draw the line. You have to draw the line on them. Don't go through life feeling like you're powerless. Victims are people that are powerless. You're not powerless. You are powerful. You direct the power in your life. Whatever your life is right now, it is a duplication of your consciousness. 
is a result of how you have decided to use your power. That's all it is. That's not who you are. That's just a perverted use of your power that you aren't satisfied with. And you've got the power to change that. Wherever you are, how, I don't know. But I know you've got the power to do that. But you don't know what has happened to me. It really doesn't matter what has happened to you. See, the only thing that really matters is what are you going to do about it? That's all that matters. That's all that matters. You can allow it to destroy you or you can allow it to build you up. John Powell in a book called Why I'm Afraid to Tell You Who I Am, and he went to get a newspaper. Guy was very discourteous to him. He was very courteous to the guy. The guy who was with him said, why would you be as courteous to this guy as you were considering how rude he was to you? He said, I'm not going to allow that man to determine how I'm going to act. That thing's that's gonna to happen to you in life, ladies and gentlemen, make it okay. Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. I cannot change the fact that when I asked my son to go, that I will no longer take care of him, that he became angry and perhaps hate my guts. To change the things that I can, I can change how I respond to it. I can become upset, nervous, tense about it, weak about it, or I can say, it's okay. He who cares less wins.